you from that end is a bit poor. Uh, so I just wanted to get some confirmation whether you can hear me or not. Are you able to hear me? Because I can see my video. I just want to make sure the audio is working. Okay, very good. All right, thank you. So, uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to join you uh, today. Uh, actually, virtually, um, it's uh, it's nine p. You know, it's actually nine thirty, nine forty-five p.m. where I am uh, here in the United States, uh, and it is uh, it is nice to be a part of uh, Sash twenty twenty-two. I'd like at the outset to thank the organizers, uh, particularly Dr. Jawahar, who I've known for many years, over fifteen years. Uh, he's a good friend, uh, and uh, he's a very good administrator and leader and teacher. And it's been a pleasure for me to collaborate with him over the years. I also wanted to thank Dr. Biswa Jeevan, who's been my point of contact for uh, this uh, presentation. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to be talking about, uh, as you may have got from the title, of the VISTA EHR, the Electronic Health Record System, that was implemented at the uh, Department of Veterans Affairs, which is one of the federal government agencies in the United States that gives healthcare to veterans. And veterans are, if you are not familiar with that term, what the United States sort of calls its ex-servicemen. So those men and women who were in the military who got either retired or discharged and uh, afterwards they are eligible to get health care from uh, the, the VA system. So, uh, and why am I talking about this? And, and what is the relevance of something like this potentially to your conference, which I think deals with, uh, with safety and sustainability in hospitals. Uh, a particular focus on administrators uh, for, 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 this, for this year's session. And uh, really to tell you about that, I have to tell you a little bit more about myself. Um, you know, I've been, half my life I've been in India, half I've been in the United States. Uh, my, my MBBS, my medical degree was from Trivandrum in Kerala. After that, my post-graduation in medicine was from Cornell uh, in New York. Uh, and uh, since then, uh, since 1993, uh, I've been uh, a teaching faculty uh, at the St. Louis VA or Veterans Administration Medical Center. I'm now a professor of medicine. I'm both certified in both internal medicine as well as clinical informatics uh, and preventive health. And also uh, during this period, so it's been my 33rd year as a physician, uh, in between uh, from about 2004 to 2008, I was at the Amrula Institute in Cochin. Uh, I was a founder director for the Center for Digital Health, uh, which was looking at applied health informatics, which includes electronic records, telemedicine, clinical simulation, uh, and a number of uh, rather advanced uh, initiatives in health informatics. So that's kind of my background. And looking at this, what, uh, what this conference is trying to do, I think, uh, it can be very, very important to have a capable and competently executed and implemented electronic health record system. Uh, the days where you can just have little chits of paper and you're writing this and that and the patient carries this around and this becomes the health record, uh, those days are going by. And that will not, and it's not going to come back. So really it's important that, uh, that there be, that there be, uh, that there be a, uh, a focus on how to do this well. And that's where the VA uh, is really a noteworthy example. Uh, in fact, the VA, uh, you know, talking a bit about the VA, so it was, run, it was run by the federal government. So just like Indian government hospitals, the VA system, when I first started there in 1993, uh, had the same kind of problems, the same kind of challenges, where, you know, there was poor infrastructure, there was a lack of accountability. So, you know, the people weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. The systems weren't working the way they, were, they should have been working. And there was therefore a perception of poor quality uh, from all fronts. If you ask even the people who worked there, and they themselves didn't feel confident about the quality of their care, much less the patients who are coming there, the general public. And so there was a general feeling uh, amongst all these stakeholders that all oh, the VA is one of these places that, you know, is, is not first rate, is top top notch. Um, and it also was functioning rather within a silo, sort of by itself. 
you know, you know, so that it wasn't communicating with the other parts of the healthcare system in the country, the advanced private healthcare systems. Um, and therefore, you know, there was really not much visibility of what was going on in the system, especially to people outside the system. So it was in this kind of a context that in the late 1970s and early 1980s, a bunch of uh, computerized, computer guys, you know, before the term geeks became fashionable, these guys were, you know, became, were really seeing the potential of what computerization could do to help advance the VA's healthcare system. And with that in mind, they started working on computer programs in all these different places. Because now today the VA has 1,700 odd clinics and hospitals. In those days, maybe it was about three or 400. But still, in many of these places, individually, these guys started working. Then they secretly hooked up you know, with each other by telephone and by, by messages and fax. And, and it was not with the approval or, or even the desire of administration that they were doing this. It was because of passion, because of commitment. And these guys managed to create things that were really revolutionary and part of it of its time. Uh, and ultimately, initially did not meet with the favor of administration. Uh, some of them were persecuted. Some of them were actually demoted. Um, and they really faced threats to their job security. But because of their passion, they kept at it till finally a group of administrators high enough up saw the potential, embraced informatics, and the VA became went on to become one of the world's leading exponents and experts uh, in applied healthcare informatics in the entire globe. Yeah. Not only really that, they went on to implement the system they call Vista uh, CPRS. CPRS means Computerized Patient Record System, and this is today till date. Uh, I would say, and I doubt that there would be anybody knowledgeable who would want to oppose the statement, is that it is the world's most successful implementation of an electronic health record system ever. Because of the size and scope of what was done, there are 1,700 individual institutions, uh, you know, literally million, millions of patients who are being covered, uh, tens of thousands of healthcare professionals and who are also working with the system. And way back in 1997, uh, we were essentially 100% paperless. Everything was computerized, even 25 years ago. So that was a, a real milestone in the history of health informatics. Um, and that, and how did this work? And the, th the key things that helped this happen was there was really a, 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 a collaboration between clinicians, ancillary health staff, administration, and information technology. So this was a true collaboration. It wasn't top down from administration ordering people to do it. It was an information technology telling everybody, well, you have to follow this or, you know, we, we, can't, we can't implement. Uh, we had something, for example, called CAMP CPRS, where they had nearly a thousand different people at a time drawn from all over the country, including regular typical clinicians. Not clinicians who are necessarily computer savvy or proponent of computerization, just typical frontline clinicians. They would be there. The IT guys would be there, starting from their very top down to their regular frontline programmers. There would be ancillary staff and there would be administrators, regular administrators and super senior administrators. And all these people would then be considering certain issues, such as how can we make the computerization go effectively in a clinical setting? How can we make this relevant to patients? What are some of the challenges that are being faced by those who are using the system? And what do they think could actually help it become a better system? So these were some of the key kind of things that were discussed. And over time, this became a very robust system. It became, uh, it, you, you, you almost never had any downtime, any downtime at all. It loaded instantaneously. Uh, and it allowed uh, a great deal of communication between the different departments and the department and the different functions of the VA to be done. So I mentioned at the outset that we suffered from poor infrastructure, we suffered from a lack of uh, accountability, uh, and that we also had a perception of quality. So these were three issues, I would say, that were a problem. So what happened over time? Well, politically speaking, after 9-11, uh, you know, when that happened and then there was military interventions in, in Iraq and Afghanistan and all of that. From a U.S. perspective, you know, military became, you know, really at the top of the heap. 
I mean, the entire population felt very strongly about supporting the military. And so the VA, became, uh, because it was for ex servicemen, suddenly it became popular among both popular, uh, political parties to support the VA. So a lot of funding came into the VA. So a lot of funding came in, infrastructure improved, and we could uh, hire better and better human resources uh, to do what, we, what needed to be done. So because of this infrastructure, our IT structure was also very good. Uh, and using the tools of informatics, accountability improved. Because, for example, in the old days, I ordered a lab test. And then I'm looking for this result. In the computer, okay, I look for a result. There's no result there. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's because the patient didn't go to the lab, or they went to the lab, but the sample didn't get to the main lab, or the main lab didn't process it correctly because there was a problem with the sample, uh, the blood clotted, for example. But now, by looking at this electronic health record, we could find out exactly what happened. And this became a great step forward. Um, so, and then in terms of quality, we got into a, a system of, uh, of consistently allowing or asking ourselves to benchmark against the leading private entities, the top universities, the top private healthcare systems. And over time, the VA became a leader. The VA became superior in performance by established criteria and credentialing uh, to market is in a famous private healthcare systems. And this was an eye-opening experience for the whole country to see that here is the VA that people had looked down upon as questionable quality, poor infrastructure, you know, all bureaucratic procedures. Now leading the way in terms of clinical outcomes, healthcare, patient satisfaction. And what really made this possible was effective informatics. So this is this wonderful. This is a great story of how some few passionate people managed to get this whole monolithic government and system into this wonderful uh, kind of a situation of uh, good outcomes, patient satisfaction, etc. Unfortunately, uh, this is not what's happening right now because there were some weaknesses that were also a part of this whole story. Um, this, the way the, the system was developed was entirely in-house. It wasn't outsourced. It wasn't bought from some private company. Uh, and even today, it's an open source uh, infrastructure that, that people can buy. You can you know, not buy, you can, you can access it rather, not buy. You can access it as an open source and you'll get even the updates uh, without paying a cost for it. But because of the, the old architecture on which this whole thing is built, over 25 years old, uh, it's difficult to update it. The, the experts who knew how to do it, they're all in house people. Some of them have retired, some of them have died. And there just wasn't that kind of ongoing expertise to maintain the system to the point that the, the, the whole thing is sort of about to implode on itself. And so a decision was taken uh, some years ago to transition to a private healthcare system, uh, electronic record system made by SANA because they also had a contract for the military. So that's where you can get seamless transfer of information from the military when these people leave and then they become ex-service when then when they go to the VA, you can see what happened to them in the military. So this was the basic concept, which sounded fine. But unfortunately, this is not what actually occurred. When they tried to do this and implement this, uh, they've had pilot projects. Uh, and there were hundreds and hundreds of significant serious red flag events that happened to the point that the whole thing was suspended. They had to have a 90-day moratorium. They had to inspect this. Uh, the costs are ballooned out of control. It was a $16 billion project. Now the estimates are... Uh, nearly 40 billion with a B, and that's a massive amount of money being spent on this. And they're not even sure that they can successfully do it. Uh, Oracle recently bought SARA, and as of yesterday, I just saw a report that Oracle said we're going to rewrite this entire system, put it on the cloud uh, as a free upgrade. Uh, the real reason being it was a mess, it was a disaster. So here was a wonderful, successfully working system that unfortunately could not sustain because of these inherent weaknesses. Um, so what can we learn from this for Indian healthcare for administrators and who are potentially going to be dealing with an electronic health record system or who will be thinking of getting one and implementing one or looking at changing our tax power? On the plus side, I would say that it can be seen that passion can bridge a lot of gaps. Passion makes a difference. So you have to see how can you get passion about the subject, which usually gets eye rolls of, of trepidation from the majority of people who are not directly involved, from the non-IT guys. 
Uh, secondly, bringing your stakeholders and getting them really involved in a collaborative way like the VA did uh, is the way to succeed. Because otherwise, if it's just administrators trying to order the rest of the people around, if it's just the IT group guys saying, hey, if you don't do this, it's all going to collapse. So you all have to learn to do this the way we need it. Then that's not going to work. And, and then you've got to have the refinements and modifications uh, that are going to be required to ultimately lead to success. Uh, and fourthly, if you have data warehousing, uh, which the VA did, we have we had literally millions and millions of unique patient records full of clinical information that were then stratified and studied. And so the VA healthcare database has become one of the world's leading data warehouses that have enabled tremendous amounts of research uh, and outcomes evaluation. But at the same time, the negative swear that if you don't have a robust process for knowledge transfer and propagation, when the guys go away, then you know you have a problem. You can't keep it up. You can't sustain it. The whole VA system, the electronic infrastructure was specialized and created in-house. So it was fairly unique to the VA's needs, many parts of it. So some parts of it are very robust even clinically, other parts are not. And so that becomes a problem. And if you don't have that long-term vision, then you can't sustain it. And your own conference is about sustainability and safety. So sustainability is really important and you have to keep it in mind because otherwise here is a wonderful system that has such a great track record that has now failed. So my recommendations in conclusion, what can you take away from all this? Number one, uh, be very careful about vendors because they want to sell their product. Should really only go with people who've got a very proven and verifiable track record of implementations that have lasted for years, not just some kind of propaganda material that comes out. Cheaper is not going to be better. Cheaper is not going to be better. And this whole electronic record system will really interface and interact with your entire hospital processes. You know, it's not just for our patients or just about billing. So you've got to be careful. Uh, you've got to put enough infrastructure and money up front so that you can get the returns that you are going to uh, deserve at, at later. Uh, and finally, involve the clinicians and start from the beginning. You've got to work hand in hand with them, uh, get their buy-in and strengthen processes so that safety and sustainability are being sustained. Uh, a lot of these companies, at least in India from what I've seen, uh, you have doctors also with them. But these doctors, well, most of them have not had very much clinical experience. They get an MBBS and then they're doctors and then they use that label. But unfortunately, they really haven't worked in a hospital in the kind of settings that uh, the real hospitals are functioning in. And so therefore, what they propose may not be even very realistic from a workflow standpoint. So in conclusion, uh, I think electronic health records are vital. Uh, a solid infrastructure with a vision and a plan uh, can go a long way towards building a safe and sustainable healthcare environment in India. Thank you so much. So, to have a session with you to so you so believe we will have a question? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Yes, I was actually on uh, vacation with family and everyone at home. Uh, but, uh, you know, when, when Dr. Jawar asked me, you know, he was such a, such a close uh, a friend, uh, you know, I couldn't say no. So here I am, uh, you know, uh, doing the best I can. But again, with the marvels of technology, when it works, it's good. Uh, I hope uh, the audio and video were clear. Uh, but uh, again, it's been a pleasure for me to participate and I wish uh, the conference uh, all success. Uh, I hope I've not exceeded time very much uh, because I don't want to add to the delay that you're already experiencing. Thank you. 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 Th